Hello guys. Well, today we are going to continue with some of problems from chapter 6. And especially today we are going to be treating the part related with the method of the sections for truss analysis. And let's start with this problem, which is a basic problem. It says for the Pratt bridge truss shown here, determine the actual force in the member EK. This member, that's the one that I have to calculate. And then it says that F is equal to 340, each one of these is 340, and L is equal space and everything is 8 meters. So basically, it doesn't tell me that I have to do a method of the sections, but you know, if I have to start with the method of the joints, then I should have to solve this joint and then move to this one and then move to this one and then move to this one and then, then move to this one. So I have to do one, two, three, four, five joints in order to calculate the bar that I'm looking for. Instead of that, I can make, just make one quick section here and immediately I'm going to find that bar. And that's what we're going to do. But before doing that, we have to be sure that the number of unknowns that I can have, the maximum number of unknowns, remember, uh, by using the method of the section, because we are basically doing rigid body analysis, equilibrium, is 3, because we have 3 equations on 2D. And if I make a cut here and I separate this part, well, you can use either left or right, but if you use the, la the right part, it's uh, less operations, less calculation that you have to do. Basically, if you do that, you have 1, 2, 3 unknown bars, plus one unknown reaction, it would be four. Uh, that means that I can't solve it immediately, and the first thing that I have to do is calculate the reactions. What reactions are going to have there? Well, this is a roller, as you can see here. It's going to be one vertical reaction, or not vertical, perpendicular to the surface of support, to the support surface, and it's HY. And in this case, we're going to have AY and AX. But by simple inspection, because you don't have any other horizontal force, when you do summation of forces in X, this force is going to be zero. So you can just not place that force over there. Now, if I'm going to use this side, that means that I need to calculate the reaction HY. In order to calculate the reactions, I'm going to do summation of moments about the point A equals zero, and then I have to do F times L negative, F times 2L negative, F times 3L negative, F times 4L, F times 5L, all of those negatives, plus HY times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6L, and then solve for HY, or I can just use symmetry. Why symmetry? How? What is symmetry here? Well, you see this stru a structure is symmetric or better say antimetric because you have this bar in common, but you have symmetry, geometric symmetry in the structures and in the structure and in the loads also. Loads are symmetric. That, that makes it really simple to calculate. That say that the total load has to be absorbed equally by this reaction and this reaction. Or I can say that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times F, 5 times 340, divided by 2, because I have two reactions, that's going to be equal to AY or HY. And that is going to be 850 kilonewton. You see, it's a little bit of uh, time that we are saving here, but time is crucial when you take a test. So just be certain and of recognizing that type of situations. Now once I have that I can proceed to do my cut. And the cut is gonna be something like that. I'm gonna have this, this here, this here, and then I have this, this, this is the E, this is E K and this is KL. I have a force F 
and that force F is 340 and I have another 340 force here and then I have this and I have this and I have a reaction of 850 in this part L, 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 that means that this is L and all of these three, I can make this I don't know if I'm gonna use it like that and you know this is the section but this will be either case the joint K and this will be the joint D which they don't belong to the section but I know the places of those joints so these distances are gonna be 8, 8, 8, everything in meters and this is also 8. Now I don't even have to do this for solving this problem but I'm gonna complicate the problem a little bit more. The problem is just asking me to calculate the force in the member EK which is this member here and as you can see just by simple inspection this angle is 45, why? Because this is 8, this is 8, tang inverse tangent of 8 divided by 8, this angle is 45. And also, by just doing summation of forces in Y, in my section, I can solve the, the for the variable, variable that I'm looking for, which is EK. So I'm going to say negative, the vertical component of EK comes in this direction, so it will be negative EK cosine 45 minus 340 minus 340 plus 850 that has to be equal to zero and then I can solve here for EK and EK is going to be 240.42 kilonewton and because I assume EK in tension or coming out of the joint which is tension and the sign here is positive that means that I assume it correctly so this bar is subject to tension done that's everything that's all I have to calculate because that's the only thing that I'm asked now if and only if this is not part of the problem but let's say that I was asked to calculate the E so if we have to calculate the A which is this force then I could do summation of moments about the point K and I can do summation of moments about k equals 0 this is positive then I'm going to have de times the distance 8 and this is going to be positive in this direction negative because remember it's rotating in this direction negative 8 times 340 8 times 340 negative 16 now, 16 times 340 plus, because now this force of 850 is going in that direction plus 850 times 24 equals 0 and then I can solve for the E which is going to be equal to negative 1530 kilonewton and that negative sign, remember, what implies is that originally DE was assumed leaving the joint but that's not the correct direction then because if the sign is negative DE correct direction is this one is entering in the joint I strongly suggest you to do a little drawing here if this is the joint E you just copy the correct direction for DE going in this way and immediately assign compression as the this direction of that uh, force. Now if I want to calculate uh, KL just for finishing, it's not asked to do but KL I can do it by doing summation of forces in X and I can say summation of forces in X equals 0 and then you can have that DE, now remember to include the correct direction of DE the E is going to the right, so it's 1530 positive. Now KL is going uh, to the left in the direction that I assume it. In tension, negative, negative what? Negative uh, KL, which is this one, 
No, KL is this one here. KL, this is a EK. So EK is negative also, yes. Because it's going to the left. It's going to be EK sine 45 degrees. And I know EK, remember, this is 240.42 because we just calculated. And KL is this one, negative KL. And I don't have anything else going there, equals zero. So I can solve for KL. And KL is going to be equal to 1360 kilonewton. And because the sign is positive, that means that KL was positive, was in tension. That means that my result is going to be in tension. Remember, this problem, the only thing that we were asked to calculate was this one. These two, I didn't have to do it. I just did it for showing a little bit more of work and show you how to calculate it in the easiest way. Now, uh, at the end, just present your results tabulated. Um, it was only one, but because we calculated the four of them, I'm going to prepare the four of them. It's going to be the, far, the bar, the force, tension, compression, the value here of the force in the units are kilonewton. And this is going to be my bar or my element or my force. So the first one is EK, which is was the only one that I was asked for, 240.42 kilonewton in tension. The second one was the E that we calculated. We didn't have to, but I'm including it, 1530 kilonewton compression. And the third and last one is 1350 for KL kilonewton also in tension. You see, that's a very simple problem, but it's uh, uh, very indicative of the type of problems that you can do and the time that you can save just by applying the method of the sections when you have to apply the method of the section. That doesn't mean that you can't proceed by using the method of the joints, but it's going to be easier for some cases to use the method of the sections. See you in the next, uh, in the next video, guys. Thank you for watching.